Hello, this is the audio version of Park Run Magazine. Thanks so much for listening. Each episode of the audio magazine will share hints and tips about getting started on a more active lifestyle, as well as stories about the people and communities around Park Run events. A very warm welcome to the first episode of the second series of this audio version of Park Run Magazine. Each episode features a selection of the stories from the second edition of the printed magazine. Coming up in this episode, we'll hear some words originally written by Park Run's Chief Executive Officer, Russ Jeffries. We'll also discover why walking is so beneficial for both your mind and your body, and tell the story of Park Run's first 18 years. We hope you enjoy listening. To kick off this episode, let's hear from Russ Jeffries, Park Run's Chief Executive Officer. His words are spoken by an actor. We're so pleased to be back for the second issue of Park Run magazine. More than 90,000 of you picked up your own copy of the first printed mag and paused for a moment or two to enjoy stories about how GP practices are prescribing Park Run, the joys of spending time in the forest, and how we can all incorporate hills into our routine. We hoped that publishing a magazine, putting Park Run into print, would be an opportunity for us all to slow down, if only briefly. The pace of modern life, with seemingly never-ending social media feeds and 24-7 rolling news, can feel relentless at times. And it's pace that we're talking about in issue two of Park Run magazine. Following the return of Park Run events after the pandemic, we surveyed more than 5,000 Park Runners who now come along to Park Run less often than they did previously. Sadly, Around 20% of respondents told us that they hadn't yet felt fit enough to return to Park Run. Despite encouraging walking at Park Run and ensuring that a volunteer tailwalker is always the last person through the finish funnel, we realised that too many people still don't know that not only is it okay to walk at Park Run, but it's actively encouraged. When we celebrated our 18th birthday in October 2022, we also celebrated walking at Park Run with the start of the Park Walk initiative. In this series of the audio magazine, we'll find out a lot more about the joys of walking. Don't forget that if you'd like to hear any of the stories from issue one, search for series one of this audio magazine wherever you normally get your podcasts. In the meantime, let's get going with issue two. Park Run turned 18 in October 2022. Let's take a quick look back at some of the memorable moments from those first 18 years of people getting active outdoors every weekend. October 2022 marked 18 years since the very first Bushy Park time trial, when 13 runners and 5 volunteers took part in a timed 5k through a stretch of parkland in Teddington, South West London. A lot can change in 18 years. We've had six UK Prime Ministers since 2004. Back in that year, a website named Facebook started in certain universities in the United States. The iPod was a cool accessory and shares in a small company called Google went public. But the ethos of the Bushy Park time trial, the event that would evolve into the global park run movement, has remained constant a free, weekly, community event that's open to everyone. Now, hundreds of thousands of finish times are processed each week and Park Run takes place in more than 20 countries. Over half a million people worldwide have volunteered at a Park Run, a few more than the five at that first event. Founder Paul Sinton Hewitt's original model has been successfully replicated around the world and Park Run has remained free. Everyone is welcome, whether they're trying to bring walking into their daily routine or they're a seasoned runner. A successful partnership with the Royal College of General Practitioners in 2018 created the Park Run Practice Initiative, which sees thousands of GP practices signposting patients and staff to Park Run as a way to improve health and well-being. It's a highly effective form of social prescribing, which puts patients at the centre of their own care and connects them to support networks in the community. Since 2017, 
Park runs have also taken place in selected prisons and young offender institutions, helping to change the lives of thousands of walkers, joggers, runners and volunteers on the custodial estate. Junior Park Run, which began in 2010 and expanded in 2013, continues to open up opportunities for those aged 4 to 14 and, of course, their families to get together outdoors for 2K events on Sunday mornings. During Park Run's next 18 years, who knows what else will have changed in the world? One thing we are working to ensure is that we will still be able to join in a free Park Run on a Saturday and Sunday. During the 19th century, walking was a hugely popular sport, attracting massive crowds. These days, and particularly during the lockdowns, when many more of us discovered walking, we know the physical and mental health benefits that walking can provide. On the 12th of July, 1809, at 3pm, a man emerged from a tent set up on a flat area of land near the town of Newmarket, to be greeted by a crowd that observers on the scene estimated to be in the thousands. Pulling himself up to his full height, Captain Robert Barclay Allardyce of Ury in Scotland set off to walk a single mile, and in doing so, Barclay assured himself of global fame and significant wealth. He also cemented the sport of pedestrianism as one of the most popular of the period. Captain Barclay's feat was one of incredible endurance. The mile that he embarked upon that afternoon was actually the thousandth mile he'd walked in just over 41 days. Already famous as a pedestrian, Captain Barclay had made a wager that he could walk one mile every hour for 1,000 hours. At the time, walking had evolved from a means to simply get around into a sport, generating massive amounts of press coverage and fevered betting. Today, walking is still a sport, albeit a rather niche one. Nevertheless, as an activity, walking can provide huge benefits for both physical and mental health. According to the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History in the USA, humans probably evolved to walk upright in response to changes in climate and because walking on two legs was more efficient than moving on all fours in the way monkeys do. Being upright additionally benefited our earliest ancestors in many ways, including making it easier to reach fruits and other food from trees and bushes, having both hands free for carrying provisions and tools, helping our predecessors to appear larger and more intimidating, and, crucially, giving early humans the ability to cross wide, open landscapes quickly and efficiently. Nowadays, the benefits of walking are different, but no less significant. So what are those benefits? According to Dr. Paul Kelly, lecturer in physical activity for health at the University of Edinburgh, there are many ways that walking can help to support a healthy life, both physically and mentally. The benefits of walking for mental health and emotional well-being are well established, says Dr. Kelly. It is certainly the case that walking leads to improved mood and higher levels of energy, and it is also the case that often people go walking with others, which has the effect of reducing feelings of isolation. There are many reasons walking is good for mental health. Dr. Kelly suggests that walking can be a distraction from the pressures of everyday life. Being surrounded by nature is also hugely beneficial for mental well-being. Another positive impact of walking is that it can help people feel more confident, simply because they're being active. There are also physiological explanations for why walking is good for mental health. There is evidence that raising your body temperature and increasing blood flow improves mood and mental wellness. In a paper entitled Walking on Sunshine, which Dr. Kelly co-authored, the findings are pretty clear. Despite a lack of cohesive research looking into the mental health benefits of walking, there is enough evidence that walking should be promoted as a treatment for depression and anxiety, and that walking outside in natural environments, as opposed to on a treadmill, confers additional benefits that should not be ignored. Walking doesn't only benefit mental health. Professor David Stencil from the School of Sport, Exercise and Health Sciences at Loughborough University has carried out several studies looking at, among other things, the physical health benefits of walking. In one study we had young, healthy subjects in their 20s take a brisk walk, Professor Stencil explains. 
and the next day their blood pressure was reduced significantly. It's what we call an acute effect, in that it lasts for 24 hours and needs to be repeated to keep seeing the benefit. Professor Stencil also looked at the impact of walking on the amount of fat in the blood after a meal. His findings show that walking releases an enzyme called lipase, which has the effect of taking fat out of the blood and storing it in muscles and other tissue, where it is kept safely. One result of reducing fat in the blood is a reduction in the risk of heart disease. For older people, there are perhaps even more benefits that come from walking. Dr. Kelly points out that it's been shown that walking helps with the retention of functional strength, which in turn helps decrease the chances of someone taking a fall. And Professor Stencil observes that walking has been shown to be beneficial for something called angiogenesis, the growth of new blood vessels, which tends to diminish as we age. There's even been research that looked at the benefits of walking for brain size, says Professor Stencil. In one study, researchers took two groups of 60-year-olds, one of which was instructed to take brisk walks, while the other group wasn't. The walkers were found to have bigger hippocampus regions of the brain, which was correlated with the growth of neurons. A research paper published by Dr. Kelly, alongside Professor Marie Murphy at Ulster University and Professor Nanette Mutry, also at the University of Edinburgh, concludes, at the physical level, walking improves physical condition, cardiovascular function, blood pressure, reduces cholesterol level, and improves glucose control, among other physical benefits. In April 2021, Professor Murphy was a guest on the BBC's Just One Thing podcast, hosted by Michael Mosley. She talked about a study she was involved in that collated the results of 11 previous surveys and concluded that walking at any pace reduced the risk of cancer, and brisk walking at a pace where it's possible to talk but not sing reduced cardiovascular disease by between 10 and 20%. Happily, the dose required to derive some benefit from walking is not particularly large. Dr. Kelly says that just 20 minutes or half an hour of brisk walking is enough to start to realize many of the benefits. Dr. Kelly also points out that unlike some other forms of exercise, walking can be done wearing normal clothes and does not require any specialist equipment. Perhaps even better, Professor Murphy and Professor Stencil both say that splitting up the total time spent walking into smaller chunks does not reduce its effectiveness, and in fact, might even increase the benefits. However, walking more is just one small change you can make if you want to be healthier and happier. Some people also find that changing their eating habits can also be beneficial. So it seems that walking can have all sorts of benefits, and we don't have to take after Captain Barclay to reap the rewards. Indeed, following Captain Barclay's example is almost certainly not a good idea. At the time of his huge undertaking, a newspaper reported that Barclay ate his first breakfast at 5am when he dined on roast fowl, drank a pint of strong ale and two cups of tea, with bread and butter. And sadly, Barclay was robbed of the chance to see whether his extreme walking would have given him extremely good health. He died aged 75 after being kicked by a horse. For the rest of us, it seems clear that walking can be a great way to improve and protect our physical and mental health, one step at a time. Every Saturday and Sunday morning, communities come together around Parkrun and Junior Parkrun events here is the story of one of the amazing people who take part each week. Julie McGlynn told us about travelling around the world to go to Park Run. She said, I live in Thailand with my husband and my two boys, and my uncle lives in Lancaster, where he's a regular volunteer at Lancaster Park Run. We love our annual summer visits and have been participating in Lancaster Park Run for seven years. During the COVID restrictions, we missed being in the UK, so summer 2022 was very special for us. Not only did we celebrate being back with my uncle again, but in July we celebrated my seven-year-old son's first park run and my uncle's 100th volunteer. After all the strife and upheaval of the pandemic, how wonderful that park run continues to bring people together across countries and generations. Thank you, park run. 
We really hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of the second series of the audio edition of Park Run magazine. It was so lovely to hear from all those park runners and to learn something about the benefits of walking for our bodies and brains. In the next episode, we'll have a chat with international athlete Jake Whiteman, and we'll also hear from park runners of retirement age and beyond, who walk, jog, run, and volunteer with park run communities on Saturday and Sunday mornings. Thank you for listening to Park Run Magazine. We hope you liked the features and enjoyed our simple ways to take steps towards a happier and healthier life. To find out more about your local parkrun event or collect a free copy of the printed magazine, head over to magazine.parkrun.com. Parkrun Magazine is created by Parkrun, with the audio version made possible through editing and audio adaptation by Imogen Lees and production by Light the Wind Media and Runcom. If you enjoyed listening, please remember to subscribe, leave a review or share it with others. That's all for this episode. We hope you enjoy the next one.